respect yourself man is mind mind continues to do the same thing over and over again and yet it still expects a different outcome he fails in love tries again and continues to do the same thing over and over again. rituals everywhere we see the same repetition same repetition for different reasons this is insanity insanity is doing the same thing over and over again in different manners thinking that this time it will bring a better results a different results how can one respect oneself the first thing that you have to remember is never think anything condemnatory about you one has to learn to respect oneself and respecting oneself for what you are is the beginning of a great change we have been taught to condemn despise and hate we have been told to love others but we have not been told to love ourselves loving yourself is considered as selfish and wrong everything that is right for inner development society considers as wrong we have been told to love others but we have not been told to love ourselves as a result we do not have a good image of us and without a good image of yourself you will not be able to to know who you are and the journey of spirituality begins with the question who am i when you start investigating into this question who am i am i the mind that keeps on changing every moment am i the body that keeps on changing that undergoes the process of transformation am i the intellect am i the thoughts then ultimately when one continues the journey into who am i ultimately realizes that i am that which is i am that consciousness that remains always one does not want to look at oneself if one is condemned as a sinner one can enter into oneself only when one feels that one is going into something beautiful the beginning of love is to love oneself you cannot love the other unless you have known the art of loving yourself the beginning of god is to think of oneself as divine nobody is a sinner but if you believe you are a sinner you will remain one it is a question of belief god creates the clean slate nothing is written on your inner sky your conditioning makes you believe that you are sinner indeed it is your conditioning that makes you believe you are a sinner for eons the society has given you a conditioning that man is born a sinner and that is the christian theology that man is sinner your conditioning makes you believe that you are sinner the word self existence comes from is beautiful and it comes from this sanskrit language swayam bhu 
Swayam means self and Bhu means existence. That which is self-existence. There are things which are not self-existent. They depend on others for existence. For example, water is not self-existent. It depends on the two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, and that too in a certain proportion. It is a combination. If hydrogen and oxygen disappear from existence, water will disappear as well. It is a secondary phenomenon of primary. On the contrary, consciousness is the primary phenomenon. It is not a combination of anything else. It is itself. That is the meaning of Swayambhu, self-existence. You are consciousness and consciousness is self-existent. You cannot disappear from existence. There is no way to destroy you. No death can kill you. No poison can touch you. Yet still man considers that death comes to him. Death comes to the body. Death comes to the mind. A certain aspect of the mind disappears. But it goes actually into the subtle form. The innermost core of your being is self-existent and all that is self-existent is eternal. It has been always and it will be always. It cannot be destroyed by any means because it is not a composition. It cannot be destroyed because it is not caused by anything else. And that is the meaning of self-existence. Your being, consciousness, or whatever you may call it, is self-existent. Some in Buddhist language is known as right, and Buddha means awareness, right awareness. Awareness can also be wrong. It is wrong when it is cultivated, practiced, forced, and somehow managed by effort. Then it is wrong. It creates a tension in your being rather than relaxing you. It makes you tense and creates a stress. Awareness is right and spontaneous. Awareness is right when it is spontaneous, when it is not forced, when it arises out of no effort, instead out of understanding. This is the meaning of the word Sambudhu means right awareness. Never practice it. Remember, a practice thing is always false. When it comes naturally, you look at the children. They are not practicing anything. Everything is natural and spontaneous. Remember, a practice thing is always false. And when we start practicing something, we close the doors for that which is spontaneous then the spontaneous cannot happen. You become so full of practice that your very practice hinders the spontaneity. If someone practices love, his love will be false. And that is what we have been practicing. That is what we have been conditioned that you have to practice. In that case, it will be a practiced phenomenon. It will be rehearsed. He will be simply doing an act. He may perform it perfectly, but the real will not be in it. The real cannot be in it because the real cannot be practiced. The real can never exist in the perform. It can be skillful and false. It can be skillful 
but it will always remain false because for all that is false is very skillful and very efficient it can deceive the whole world but it cannot deceive you certainly it cannot deceive you you will know all the time that you were just making it that it was an empty gesture that you were not behind it that it was not supported by you that it had no roots in your being that it was just a plastic flower allow this spontaneous to happen and this spontaneous happens just by living life intensely remember this this spontaneous this spontaneity happens when you begin to live your life intensely whenever you live anything intensely there begins a kind of awareness which is totally different from the practiced one if you are running and your running becomes intense you will find a floating awareness around you you need not make it it is always there you are looking at a sunset you are thrilled and you come to a peak of experience suddenly there is awareness when you come to the peak of experience you are thrilled you have lived the moment intensely suddenly there is awareness it is always there when the peak comes just as at the peak it is always sunlit and darkness always disappears when you go on top of the hill nothing is there to block the sunlight just as at the peak it is always sunlit the darkness disappears so at any peak any peak moment you are aware and that awareness arises of the fis own accord and that is state is called sambuddhana self existent spontaneous so live life is intensely and totally live life at the optimum put yourself totally into each and every thing that you do and never hold even an iota of your energy then love becomes awareness walking becomes awareness then even sleep becomes awareness because at peak awareness automatically and spontaneously happens and then it has a beauty of its own the practiced is the poor thing the poor substitute live your life intensely spontaneously you will always be at the peak of your consciousness